Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this talk about OpenPixel. Am I talking loud enough? You can hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, so thank you for coming. My name is uh, Eric. My Twitter, GitHub, Bitbucket handle is Eric Gazen in one word. It's always the same. I work in Belgium as a Python developer for a company called Adimian, and we work in the field of scientific computing. So, what is OpenPixel? Uh, who is already an OpenPixel user here? Raise your hands. Yeah, thank you, Charlie. <laughs> <coughs> okay, you can all lower your, lower your hands. So, for those who don't know it yet, it's a library to read and write XLSX files. I, I stress it again. It's to read and to write <coughs> XLSX files. So, it's the new format for uh, Excel, which was released with Excel 2007. It's a bit different from the previous format because it's XML based and it was intended to be an open format uh, compared to the old binary format, but you'll see that it's not that open at all. Uh, <coughs> so the problem is, uh, will it work with my good old XLS files? No, it won't. If you want to do XLS files, there are two fine libraries called XLRD and XLWT, which do that perfect. So why? Why? Because back in 2010, uh, the only option to use XLSX files was on Windows and using COM because there was no native library to do that in Python. Uh, or you could do XLS, but as I said, I work on the scientific field and most of my uh, colleagues were breaking the limits uh, because there is a limit of 65,000 rows you can put in a worksheet and they were usually exporting more than that. So they were frustrated because they couldn't export all the data at once. Also in a previous life, I've been a .NET VBA developer. I even went to a Microsoft conference. And so I was uh, already familiar with how Excel represents uh, its, its structures inside. Uh, so before that, we were, if you wanted to, to play with large data sets, uh, not on Windows, you, you still had to use CSV files. Uh, the problem with CSV files uh, are, are numbers. Well, the, the it doesn't mean that um, uh, the OOXML uh, format is better. It's, it's insane and sensical in, in many ways. But, well, everyone uses it today. So, first advantage over CSV files, it's, it has types. It's already a great thing because uh, CSV just has two types. It's a string or it's not a string, probably a number. Uh, also, it's packaged. So if you uh, run numerical simulations, you will get dozens of files and you usually want to copy them from a machine to another machine. And uh, sometimes network can be uh, buggy and you end up uh, missing a file or having a corrupted file. So the advantage of having all your files packaged is that uh, either you have it or you don't have it. Either you have it whole or not have it at all. Also, it's compressed. Uh, it's as, as, I, as I said, it's XML based, uh, but uh, they still had the good idea to compress the XML files. So even though even though it's verbose, it's still uh, there is still a, a zipping. Um, phase when writing the, the CSV, uh, when writing the, the OOXML files. So it still takes less space, it's more space efficient uh, than, than CS bare CSV and um, actually it helped us solve a, a uh, disk space saturation problem we had on the servers. So even if it's a crappy format, uh, the, the good point is it's still more interoperable than, than CSV because, for example, if you have, um, as uh, Charlie uh, pointed out yesterday, CSV would better stand for character supported format because uh, files because it could be the, the comma is uh, liberally adapted depending on, on the tradition on the locals. So, for example, a German guy won't have the same separators as a Spanish guy. So, if you try to exchange files, CSV files, with uh, people in Europe, you'll end up with uh, broken and misaligned. Uh, files uh, pretty often. 
but we tried not to do just a simple passer and, and writer for OOXML. We tried to add a bit more um, sugar to it. Number one, and this is still a questionable feature, uh, it converts, it auto types your data. As I said, um, Excel uh, supports types, so you can enter a date and you expect that it appears like a date in Excel when you open the sheet with your Excel client. And when you read an Excel file which has pretty formatted dates, you expect it to be read in native date time Python object. So OpenPixel does it for you. It does the same with floats, percentages, uh, numbers, and strings. So what you get, what you put in, usually is the same on Excel as you 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 think you put on in Python. Uh, also, it presents your data in an intuitive way, uh, meaning it's like when you open Excel, you have a workbook where you have some small tabs at the bottom. And those are your worksheets. And that's the same. We, we <coughs> kept the same nested approach, meaning we have uh, one workbook object that uh, holds all the worksheets together. Um, also, and this is also something that uh, we had to develop for, for scientific use. Um, sometimes when you export a lot of data, you can't, it, it won't fit your RAM. And if you're memory constrained, you have to find another, another way to, to store your, to keep your data. So uh, there are two uh, memory efficient modes, maybe not uh, really faster, but at least me more memory efficient in OpenPixel, which will um, uh, export and import data with uh, a constant usage of, of RAM. OK, so now you're saying yourself, no, it cannot be that simple. Uh, so I'm showing you some code. This is uh, exactly what you'll find in the documentation. So I, I love read the docs, go there. The, the documentation is still to be improved, but at least you have some hints to get started. <coughs> so just to be sure everyone is familiar with the notion of a workbook and worksheets. So uh, here you see it's as simple as just importing OpenPixel define a workbook, create a sheet, access a cell, which here looks like A4, put a value in it. And so after I just run a, a, a selection on, on the workbook itself, so I ask him to, give, to retrieve me the data between cell A1 and cell C2. And then here you see you get a collection of cells aligned and which says A1 to C2. And then I save, I can save my workbook just with one small call. Et voila. You put your four in the cell A4. Great success. <coughs> so you can also give it a date, as I said, and it will convert it to you as uh, what Excel thinks is a date. So actually, it doesn't handle dates as uh, you and I think of it. It just turns it into a number, and then it's all about formatting. <coughs> so you see, I've, I've put a, num uh, a date in cell A1, and then I, when I'm querying the style which is used, <coughs> automatically it's already set to YYYMMDD. Same things happens when you are putting 3.14%, uh, it will convert it to um, 0 0.0314, but it will also set the, the formatting. And this, this here is the format that will, uh, when you open Excel, show you a format. So it's not, uh, even if you're uh, giving a string which looks like a <coughs> percentage a number, then it will it will use a percentage inside Excel. Okay, let's spice it a bit. Let's add charts. Uh, <coughs> so this is an example of scatter chart, which is the one taken from the documentation. So here it's same story, <coughs> but uh, I'm just doing an appending to. Uh, in two columns, I'm appending one, one, two, two, three, three, matching um, all the way down to ten. Then I'm just uh, defining one chart, two references, which points to the number. So I'm just saying that uh, I'm referencing uh, data, which is in sheet WS, which is defined just above, which is not defined just above. There's a problem in the documentation. Great. And um, so I, I build a series based on those, um, those data. I append 
the series to the chart, and then I ask the workbook to render the chart. Ta-da! You just have a chart. So it's in, in a few lines of code, you can define a simple chart like that. <coughs> As I said, you can also read files. And you'll see it's very simple. Boom, two lines of code, and your file is ready to be processed. Just import the load workbook fu function, load the workbook, and here you go. So now, <coughs> the touchy topic. I told you I work for scientists, and, and science doesn't wait. So the big question, is it fast? And there are three possible answers. No, no, eh, good enough. So by default, uh, when you open OpenPixel with all the default parameters, you won't get anything fast. The good news is it has all the features, well, it has the most uh, advanced features. It's the default uh, mode. The main problem is that uh, it keeps everything in memory for being able to do all this fancy <laughs> stuff like styling, etc. And, and if you happen to have a big data set, it will consume your RAM. Uh, his cousin, the optimized mode, is a bit faster, um, but the problem is it's still, so it's, it's better in the way that it doesn't take all your RAM, but it's not really fast in, in the fact that it's still eating a lot of CPU cycle spent in Python, because we do, uh, we still do a few conversions on the fly, and, and we add some user friendliness, but the problem is we still do it in Python. Uh, so, if you look at pure benchmarks, they would just say, no, nah, it's not really good. Hopefully, uh, benchmarks are not real life, and it's known to work pretty well in production environments, in, in several large institutions, uh, from finance to chemicals to utilities, there are really people using it in production, exporting huge data sets with, okay, they, they can live with the, the not so good performance. And anyway, we are not done yet. We are, uh, every day we are trying to improve performance, running benchmarks, profiling the functions to, to find the, the bottlenecks. So uh, it was not our main concern until recently. And, and now we have people starting to say, yeah, I'm using it really a lot and I, I get frustrated because it's not as fast as I would expect. So, uh, so from now on, we, we start to, to be uh, more uh, careful about the performance. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm seeing. Yeah, for the last six months, we, we've been doing a lot of research on this field and, and we're making progress uh, frequently. But if you are in a hurry and you're only writing, there is a, an excellent library which is really a model for us in terms of, of uh, performance, uh, which is called Excelisic Writer. And I, I'm uh, guiding you to, to use it if you want to, to just export big files. It's perfect. Uh, okay, you don't need to wait um, if you have already, oh, okay, apparently no one uh, has the problem, but if you were to use OpenPixel uh, and you still wanted to, to use it for its, its um, added features over Excel Six Writer, you still can have benefit some optimizations uh, without having to wait for us to optimize the base code. Uh, Okay, we are not talking about small workbooks like uh, 200 by 200 array is pretty fine. You can still export, import that and use the default mode, it's perfect. No, don't ask questions. Here we are talking about people having above 200 sheets with above 10,000 rows per sheet and on 100 columns. So it means a really big data set. And <coughs> one of the easiest to overlook um, optimization that would cost you a lot is uh, not making the difference between an empty cell and a cell containing an empty string. Because an empty string is a valid value. Sometimes you want to have an empty string. I, don't ask me, but you, want, you may want to have an empty string. But it's not the same thing as having no data at all. So if you just, if you have a parse, uh, sparse um, data set, and uh, for example, you have one colon on two, you don't want to fill one column full of 
empty strings. You just say none and it will just skip the cell and it will make less work for OpenPixel and for Excel than to read and write. Internally, those worksheets uh, are laid in rows and holding each row hold columns. So even if your data is in column, it's cheaper to read row by row and then to uh, transpose your data later than, than to try to make something work with columns. Uh, even though there are limitations in optimized modes, if you are uh, constrained by the performance, it's still better to uh, rewrite part of your client code to use the optimized modes instead of, of uh, trying different techniques. So, on a different topic now, I'd like to present you with the OpenPixel community. Uh, as I said, I started it uh, scratching my own itch, but then it took momentum because of uh, a lot of nice people who help me uh, daily on, on the project. So it's based on reverse engineering mostly because the, the documentation is really mm, not so good. So um, it's, it's really a big effort to, to make it work like Excel expected to be uh, released. So hopefully there are plenty of other libraries attacking different parts of the problem. And uh, as we have the kind of the same license, we can um, exchange and, and cooperate on, on working toward the same goal. Uh, it's the, the, the original work was PHP Excel. It and I, at, at first, I just ported uh, bits of PHP Excel to get started. Uh, hopefully, the guys of PHP Excel did a great work doing the, the seminal reverse engineering so I could get a better understanding of, of the OXML uh, in it. And it's a very good a very well written library. And then I didn't find it Pythonic enough, so I started hammering here and there, and now it looks nothing like Python. Uh, but it was still a one man effort, and uh, eventually, some guys at, at uh, the NeuroDebian team uh, doing the uh, NeuroSciPy um, <coughs> tool started to use OpenPixel and started to advertise about it and, and to sh show off uh, to their friends and it started to, to the, the word started to pass. So <coughs> nowadays we have a special contributor for all the styling questions, who's called Adam. We have a special contributor for the VBA question, which is called John. No, I'm just kidding, we don't use VBA, we can't. It's Microsoft put a lot of efforts into uh, uh, preventing us to do that, so we can't. Uh, there is a guy who spent uh, like almost a year to maintain a, an open pixel Python tree fork, uh, the time for us to merge efforts, and so now OpenPixel is finally Python 2 and 3 compatible. And finally, here is Charlie who arrived and, and uh, while the project was uh, being becoming a bit too heavy for me, he uh, helped me a lot and I, I, I can't stress it enough, a lot uh, on the project. He started to fixing bugs and uh, closing, well, uh, merging pull requests and he saved us from the chaos, I think. So since uh, Charlie is in, the commits are roaring, the contributors are flowing, OpenPixel is, is present in my many widely used software, like you see, uh, you might recognize some names on there. So, what's cooking? <coughs> uh, a bit later this year, we are expecting to release 1.9, which will be a big bug fix release. Uh, at a still to be determined date, we will release our first non backward compatible. Um, version which will improve mainly in the styles department. Now it's becoming a, a pretty big project. We, we figured out that we need to communicate a bit more efficiently on, on, on what's the, uh, what are the next changes uh, to avoid people having broken dependencies. Yeah, one thing that we really want to work on, uh, on, on performance and memory levels is, is the styles handling a more Pythonic API, so it looks nothing at all like PHP, ever. 
Um, maybe use LXML as our default backend from now on. We are using uh, Element 3 and LXML if it's available. So we'll benchmark it to see if we can just use LXML. We, we, want, we want to validate uh, uh, all XML data before it hits Excel, so Excel won't complain about uh, invalid uh, XML uh, within. We still have 60 more open bugs, so if you want uh, to get your uh, first foot in, uh, in an open, in, uh, open source project uh, with a very low barrier to entry, please join us. Thanks for attending. I hope anyone learned something useful. I've put you first the guidelines how to contribute to OpenPixel and uh, the mailing list if you end up using uh, OpenPixel. Questions? Yes, please. I have a. Uh, it's not uh. on. I can hear you, don't worry. Okay. Is it working? Really? Okay. Uh, so, the question, pr practical question. Uh, in continuous integration, I'm, what I'm using, uh, I have Excel with uh, lots of uh, formulas, and each day uh, they need to be regenerated to use. Uh, so yeah, the new dates will be picked up. Uh, can I do this with uh, open by XML? Uh, open oh. on open well, uh, <coughs> formulas are calculated by your Excel client, being it uh, LibreOffice or, or Excel. Uh, so it depends who who generates the the file. Oh, you you mean you have templates with yeah, formulas? Yeah, a couple of templates with lots of dates. Yep, so and the dates have. Yeah. yeah, and they have to change every day. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, calculation, we are not going to re-implement uh, a, a full calculation oh. engine as in Excel. So uh, if you want to have your formulas to be um, updated, you need first to um, to run it through uh, an Excel client. That's uh, one of, oh, I think the, the only one feature we are not going to uh, invest time on it. I know yeah. PHP Excel does it, but they had a hard time re-implementing uh, bug for bug the, the, the Excel um, solver, but we're not going to, to work on it, sorry. Are yes? there any specific statement or methods to handle the encoding of uh, an Excel spreadsheet? So, um, the encoding, uh, it's UTF-8 by default because the XML ha uh, Excel expects its data to be valid uh, XML with UTF-8 encoding. Uh, for foreign characters, I'm not uh, so sure. I think now you have to, you have to convert everything to UTF-8, uh, and it should work without any. Okay, so by default, it accepts. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. By by default, and it expects it to be. In, yeah, it ex expects UTF-8. Yeah, another question here. Um, does it support uh, formatting of heights of rows and like arranging the data on the screen? Uh, uh, sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, so, for example, if you have the uh, well later representation of the code in in the in Excel, for example, yeah, you can set the height height of the rows, yeah, and format the rows. Does it support it fully? Because I had problems with the previous uh, implementation. Uh, I'm not sure. It's that something. Um, the problem is uh, between versions uh, Mac and Windows. The units used to set this value is different, and for now it still relies on some kind of magic values and, and try and error. So I think that's something we are working on and, and trying to fix. But uh, maybe on the the currently released version, maybe that's not not working optimally. But I think that's something we should end up having fixed uh, th this year. 